In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, our reading today from Deuteronomy, as well as from Paul's letter to the Romans, captures well a key truth to remember as we ready ourselves to enter into the season of Advent. The word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Moses tells us we need not go up to heaven to retrieve it, nor is it on the other side of the sea. The word is here among us, right here, right now. This is the truth of the Incarnation. God comes down to dwell among us. This is Paul's proclamation to the Romans and an appropriate reminder today as we celebrate the Feast of St. Andrew on what is, ahead of the first Sunday of Advent, generally con considered to be the first, the first day of the church year. Um, we don't often think of that because quite often that first Sunday of Advent comes before St. Andrew's Day, but on years like this when St. Andrew's Day comes first, we're at the beginning of the church year. Now, most of the New Testament references to Andrew, including our reading today from Matthew, mention him in tandem with his brother Simon Peter, and the theme generally points to discipleship and his willingness to follow. But it's significant in that in other accounts in the Gospels, primarily in John, he appears acting as an individual on three separate occasions. Uh, first, as one of the two disciples whom John reports as attaching themselves to Jesus, who, who see him and follows him immediately. Um, and then slightly before that, uh, or slightly after that, Jesus um, is about to feed the 5,000. And Andrew, it's Andrew who comes to him and says, here's a lad with five barley loaves and two fish. And then a little bit after that in the Gospel of John, there's a group of Greeks who want to speak to Jesus, and they first approach Philip, but then Philip goes to, to um to Andrew, and then Andrew goes to Jesus. But in each of these encounters, Andrew is instrumental in bringing others to meet Jesus. In all three of those occasions, Andrew's instrumental in bringing other people to meet Jesus. Likewise, in today's Gospel from Matthew, Jesus says to Andrew and his brother, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Thus, St. Andrew's Day is a day in which we recognize evangelism. We recognize the importance of bringing others to, to Christ. And uh, there is uh, the, the Brotherhood of, of St. Andrew, which focuses specifically on bringing colleagues and family and loved ones, people close to us, into a stronger relationship with Jesus. Um, Andrew's also uh, further recognized as the patron saint of Scotland. This came up a couple of weeks ago uh, when we were talking about Samuel Seabury. Um, and we see this um, in St. Andrew's Cross, which is the major figure on the Scottish flag. If you, if you can picture the Scottish flag, it's that big X on the big white X on a blue background. Um, now, his association with Scotland goes all the way back to just a few centuries after, after Andrew's death by crucifixion. And his crucifixion was on a saltira, a kind of a cross shaped like an X, which is, is why we have that X um, associated with him today on the flag. But um, a couple of centuries after that, some of his relics were brought to Scotland. And that's how Scotland has this association with, with Andrew. Um, they were interred in a place that was then known as Fife, but uh, now we know it as St. Andrews, and um, it's a golf course. 
the birthplace of golf, which makes Andrew the patron saint of golfers as well. So golfers and evangelists. If you can combine the two, then... Exactly. <laughs> Very good, Jeff. Yeah. But all of this is not to, to diminish Andrew's biblical witness, but rather it shows us a witness to Christ whose presence has become embedded in culture in ways that he could never have imagined in his life, certainly. Um, and for me, at least, it makes him a saint whose presence, more than any of the other apostles seems most at hand. Um, I have much more, uh, what I feel anyway, is a tangible relationship to Andrew because of some of these things and because of, of his presence and culture in these, these particular ways. But Andrew's role in bringing others to Jesus, in being a, a fisher of people, is characterized first and foremost by his willingness to follow by his willingness to say yes. And you know that this is a, a theme that I, I hearken back to often, saying yes, willingness over willfulness. It's rooted not in preserving his, his own will and setting conditions on how he's going to follow, but his willingness to stop what he's doing, to put down his nets, and, and simply to follow. Now, for most of us, that's a pretty lofty ideal to, to live up to. We have responsibilities to fulfill, relationships to negotiate. We get bogged down in the minutia of, of just daily, everyday life. That's part of what it means to be human, and we can't escape that. And I'm sure that Andrew himself, I'm sure his father wasn't too happy when he dropped the net and wandered off. But... What, what his story calls me to, what we can do, is begin to discern how Andrew's willingness can be a model for us to fully recognize Christ when he comes to us and what it means in our call to serve. Christ comes to us in the minutia of, of everyday life. It comes to us in our work. It comes to us when we least expect it. He was not prepared for Jesus to show up. Um, Jesus showed up and he said yes. Never could have predicted it. And I think that's, that's akin to our own experiences when the holy comes near us. Christ comes to us in the minutia of life. For Andrew, that was just in the midst of an ordinary day of fishing with his brother. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. We heard that from, from two sources today, from, from Paul and from Deuteronomy. We need not look elsewhere. Christ is here, right here, right now. Christ comes into the world, into all its earthiness, into the mundane details to which we tend each day. He is with us. The word is incarnate in each of us living in us. And Jesus is born in each of us. And that's the season towards which we're, we're preparing ourselves right now. The Advent season is a time to prepare ourselves for that recognition. And that's what we're about to embark on together. And that's part of the reason that Andrew begins the church year, to get ready to recognize Christ when he comes to us. Christ when he comes to us incarnate in flesh and blood right before us in the minutia of daily life, of everything that we do. This is a time to prepare a place for Christ to dwell right here. So may we all, like Andrew, open our hearts to receive Christ when he comes to us. That's the first step in cultivating readiness for the coming kingdom, opening our hearts, clearing a space, that's the first step toward living into a world that is transformed by God's love. Amen. Amen.